Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about an indefinitely sustainable self-contained rubber farm. Uh, we're starting off with the Mine Factory Reloaded Machines. Uh, we've got a planter sitting under here that we're feeding with an export bus for our applied energistic system. The planter, we're just shoving rubber saplings into it and it plants them on a 3 by 3 square above it. So I've actually blocked off five of those squares, so I'm just planting on the corners. And I'll go into that a little bit more here in just a moment. Once they're planted, we've got a fertilizer that we're stocking with Industrial Craft 2 fertilizer that's causing the trees to instantaneously grow. Once they've grown, this harvester breaks all the leaves, collecting the saplings, and then breaks the trunks, collecting one piece of MFR rubber and one piece of MFR rubber wood for each one it breaks. Uh, this just spits all the items right out the back, which causes them to go into this interface, which accept, accepts them into our system. Um, so, about planting on just the four corners, I find that this system clogs up sometimes. Occasionally, the harvester will break the bottom block and the planter will plant a sapling below it. And when it does that, the top part of the tree will just sit there and it will prevent other trees from growing. So, I've done two things to prevent this from happening. The first is to just plant in the four corners. By planting in just the four corners, it causes it to happen less often. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've got a deployer here, and we've got an export bus pushing rubber wood into it. We've got a timer sitting behind it, and every 30 seconds, we put a piece of rubber wood down on this unplantable block. Since this is in the harvester's range, it detects that there is wood on the base level, it checks for trees, it cleans out any that are up there, and it breaks this piece of wood and returns it to us. Alright, so we've got three products coming out here, saplings, uh, rubber, and rubber wood. Let's look at the rubber wood first, and we are processing that in three Greg Tech industrial sawmills. For each piece of rubber wood that we process, we get one piece of sticky resin, as well as 16 wood pulp. We're processing those items over here on this other side. We've got five industrial centrifuges, each processing the sticky resin. Uh, each, every four sticky resin will produce 14 rubber, a plant ball, and a compressed plant ball. Um, and then we are taking the wood pulp and we are recycling that. So we've got three recyclers. Two of them have four overclockers and one of them has three overclockers. And this seems to be the exact amount that we need to keep up with our uh, three industrial sawmills over there. Uh, the reason that we need scrap is because we need to create Industrial Craft 2 fertilizer to fuel our MFR fertilizer machine. Uh, and so we have a uh, molecular assembly chamber over here with a recipe for that. We're crafting two fertilizer with one fertilizer and a scrap. Uh, whenever we have less than 100 fertilizer in our system, we have a always craft active on signal where we're crafting that fertilizer from that recipe. Since we do need fertilizer in our recipe for fertilizer, we've got a level emitter over here ensuring that we don't push any fertilizer into our fertilizer machine unless we have at least 20 in our system. And that kind of guards us against the lag there. All right, so we are making uh, our rubber wood into rubber uh, with a couple of byproducts and we're keeping our fertilizer supplied. The Mine Factory reloaded rubber that we're getting out of there, we're running into an induction furnace and we're cooking that into rubber bars. Uh, those rubber bars we are pushing into a unifier to make Industrial Craft 2 rubber out of. And we're storing all of our rubber, um, both from the extracted resin and the uh, converted bars in this deep storage unit. And you can see we've got about 118,000 of them so far. Uh, so we are not processing all of the wood with these three industrial sawmills. Each process takes about 10 seconds. Um, so, as you can see, we are getting well more than three blocks of wood every 10 seconds. So, the remainder of the wood, uh, we are processing in this induction furnace and we're turning it into charcoal. So, anytime we have more than a thousand wood in our system, uh, from this level emitter, we are pushing that wood in with this export bus and turning it into charcoal. And that charcoal is what we're using to power our system here. We've got a 36 block high pressure uh, solid fuel boiler here that we're powering off charcoal. And we're doing that just by putting an ME interface next to it with 64 charcoal set in the export config. So since these will take from an adjacent chest, uh, it's treating this like a chest and just pulling that out. When these are pulled out, the ME system automatically repopulates it. And we've got an aqueous accumulator buried right underneath here, uh, supplying it with whatever water it needs. Uh, also, since we're on the subject of aqueous accumulators, these industrial sawmills do require water, and they each have their own, just so I don't have to run liquid duct everywhere. Okay, well that leaves us with a little bit of sloppy product here. We've got these uh, 
compressed plants and plant balls that we're getting out of our industrial centrifuges, so we want to take care of those. We're turning our uh, plant balls into compressed plants with the singularity compressor. And then we're taking all of our compressed plants and we are turning them into biocells with this automatic canning machine. We're extracting our biocells into biofuel cells in our centrifuge extractor. And we're just dropping those right here into four diesel generators, uh, which they're making 12 EU per tick each. It's not a whole lot of power, but hey, it's better than having a system completely filled up with plant balls. Um, we're also making way more saplings than we can use, and there aren't a whole lot of uses for the Mind Factory reloaded uh, rubber tree saplings. So anytime we go above 128, we're just pushing them into this generator here uh, and burning them off for a little bit of extra power. Uh, we are also producing too much scrap to take care of all of our wood pulp, so I'm burning that as well. Um, you could, of course, you know, run that into a scrap boxinator if you just wanted to pull some products out, or if you had a matter fabricator. Um, you could also use that, but we've just got some level emitters sitting down here, and they're just causing these export buses to push the scrap into the generators whenever we have too much of it. Um, so to get the power out of the high-pressure boiler, we're just running it through some liquid ducts, and we've got nine liquid ducts on the side of the boiler, which is enough to pull all of the um, steam out each tick, and we've got five of those facing a steam consumer on an energy bridge, which is enough to fully populate it. And then we've got a um, HV output, IC2 HV output, that is fueling our MFSU. Um, we're also collecting the uh, power from our generators uh, over in our diesel generators uh, in this uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, IC2 MV consumer. Okay, so we are producing a little bit of spare power, uh, and I'm just capturing that on a second uh, HV uh, producer. And you can see we're averaging, well, this looks like this is the last thing I clicked on. We're averaging about 173 EU per tick. So nothing earth shattering, but uh, it does add up over time. See, we could start a fusion reactor with this. Um, that's about it, guys. I don't think I've looked at my ME system here. It's uh, nothing spectacular. I did need this molecular assembly chamber just to hold my one recipe. Um, I only need a, really, I guess I could get by with a 4K disk. Um, I've got an access terminal just so I can take a peek at it. As you can see, the only things we're really accumulating great quantities of are rubber and charcoal. Um, let's see, yep, and we're storing those in deep storage units. So we've got uh, 22,000 uh, charcoal stored up, and we've got uh, 119,000 rubber stored up. Uh, if you wanted to, you could almost certainly run a second HP uh, solid boiler off your charcoal output. Um, or you could build some more industrial sawmills and process more of that wood if you wanted to as well. Uh, that is the whole system, guys. We're using the MFR core there with the planter fertilizer harvester, an RP2 deployer to keep it from sticking. We're hooking everything together with applied energistics. We're processing the wood, um, turning it into resin, turning the resin into rubber. We're making fertilizer to keep that going. We're turning our excess wood into charcoal to power the entire system. And then we're cleaning up our byproducts of uh, plant balls and compressed plants and then taking care of our um, excess saplings and scrap. So this is uh, indefinitely sustainable. It will run itself uh, forever. I left it for five hours and came back and here it is. Um, and it is producing a minor power surplus. Um, the only thing that you may need to take care of is your charcoal, uh, if you want to do something with that. Otherwise, this should be all the rubber you ever need, um, and in fairly short order. So please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Feel free to leave them below, and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you.